Okay, so Be'ezras Hashem, we are continuing and Be'ezras Hashem completing our series of Shirim on the inner world of calmness. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and summarize or uncover the tamsits, the quintessence of the nakuda of what we've been trying to convey when it comes to the relationship of the human being with this notion of calmness. Now, throughout the Shirim, what we've built up is the notion that we begin with the assumption that to be calm is to be in a state of absolute non-activity. That to be calm is to be in a place where I am fully present without needing to extend myself beyond myself. And then from that perspective, anything that deviates away from that place of calmness without any need of reaching out beyond ourselves is going to be considered the opposite of calm. It's going to be considered yagiya or amelus or effort. And ultimately, the secret of manucha, at least as it applies to us in our limited experience, is that while we might not ever be able to fully rest without any need for engagement mentally, emotionally, physically, experientially, spirituality, nevertheless, we can learn to find the secret taste of calmness as it exists in our framework of experience. Which means to say that the opposite of calmness, the busyness, the intensity, time, space, orientation to self, relationship with other, notions of productivity, self-esteem, self-value, all of the concepts we've discussed, while at first glance they appear to be the enemy of calmness, they appear to be the place that we lose sight of calmness, nevertheless, from a perspective of panemias, from the inner world of it, it's specifically there that a person has the opportunity to double down and uncover the true power and the true force of the possibility of tasting calmness in this world. Because to find calmness, to find the taste of manucha is not to stop being human, but rather it's to lean into being human and to allow ourselves a framework of mind and a framework of experience that alleviates the burden, that alleviates the burden of being human, not a burden in the sense of being something that is negative in terms of the value, but a burden in sense of the intensity that it demands. And this is the very description of the mechanism of comfort, of manucha, as we understood it from the Pasuk by Yisachar. That Yisachar is the tzaddik, Yisachar is the or that recognizes that yesh schar, there's the possibility of tasting a reward. Ah, but at the very same point, schar mitzvah bahayal malekah, there's absolutely no room in this world for any element of schar. And so what Yisachar, the yesh schar, understands is that yodeya bina li'itim, when I can utilize my mind of anticipating some future thing, in spite of the fact that it's not present yet, which is the koach of bina, of maven davar mitoch davar, to understand that which will be from within what is right now. So in that perspective, yodeh bina li'itim, I can understand the secret of yesh schar, that there's a schar to be tasted. There's no full expression of schar, there's no full manucha, but nevertheless, we have the ability to taste the secret of manucha. And where does the secret of manucha come from? In a world and an existence that is, by definition, the opposite of manucha. It's a movement of extension and forward marching engagement. So the Pasuk by Yisachar says that Vayar Menucha Kitov, he saw that Menucha was a good thing, he saw that Menucha was ultimately the only way that the human being was going to be able to function in this world, to find some rest, to find some respite, to find the ability to be calm. Vayar Menucha Kitov, Vaharetz Kina Amma, and he saw that the land was pleasant, Vayat Sheikh Molisbol, and he girded his shoulders to bear the burden. And we spoke in the name of the Balasulam, in the name of the Tzadikim, that we see an inherent paradox here. If he sees that manucha and calmness and inactivity is good, then why does he then gird the, his shoulders to prepare to bear the burden, the implication of someone who's getting ready to do heavy work, leaning into it, the shoulders, that makam of das, the Tzadik with the big shoulders who has the ability to hold more than is possible of holding, the secret of the irreducible strength of the neshama in its inexhaustible nature, that there's always room for more. The Miyata Where do those shoulders come from? Where does that girding of the shoulders come from? It comes from the recognition that if I'm going to want to taste calmness in this world, I'm going to have to work for it. I'm going to have to put in the effort to cultivate a mindset, to orient myself to every step along the process of my spiritual, psychological, and physical experience from a perspective of openness, from a perspective of positive judgments, from a perspective of choosing to say yes and to affirm the possibility of comfort to affirm the possibility of finding manucha. In order to find manucha in a world that appears to be devoid of manucha, in order to uncover the possible taste of manucha in an existence that doesn't provide the innermost experience of manucha, which rests at the ready for us to experience in a time beyond awareness, the only way to do it is to learn the secret of finding manucha, of choosing manucha right here and right now. 
And the effort demands viat shech molispo that I have to prepare my shoulders. I have to prepare my das for this. It's going to be an intense work. I have to use the avoida of bechira to choose to close the mind, to choose to close the mind off from all of the notions that take me out of myself. And that's the posture. That's what we need to begin to do in order to taste menucha. One must recognize that while I can't find the absolute expression of menucha in this world, nevertheless I can taste it through the experience of bina, which is the secret of tam keikar, which, as we're going to see, is the secret of Shabbos, which is a hint of the menucha lechayolam. Now, we've seen the process of the emergence away from menucha in the founding of Kla Yisrael, in the Avos HaKadoshim and Adav and Chava, and arriving at Kain and Hevel. Not the Avos HaKadoshim, I'm sorry, we spoke about Adam, Chava, Kain and Hevel, and the earth prior to all of those expressions. What we're going to end the development of this sugya with is the encounter with Noah. Now Noah, in spite of the fact that it's the second Parsha in the Torah, is still wedged at the very end of the first Parsha in the Torah. Because ultimately, because it's specifically Noah which represents the bridge between Maisa Bereshis and the unfolding of Maisa Bereshis into the rest of the Parshios. So to deal and finally find some element of understanding, at least from my humble perspective, of the Sugya of Menucha, we're going to end, we're going to find ourselves in the world of Noah. Now there's two elements to Noah. We see already that Noach Noach, that there's two times that Noach is called. There's Noach above and there's a Noach below. There's a Nicha Elion and there's a Nicha Tachton. That's what the Zohar describes, the two parts of each and every person and the two parts of the Tzadikim, which represent the pillars of how we function in this world, models of how we function. And with Noach, we see a clear distinction in terms of his tasks. There's the Noach at the end of Parshas Bereshis and there's the Noach of Parshas Noach. The Noach at the end of Parshas Bereshis is a grappling with the final conclusion of what Maisa Bereshis gives us. The memory of those things which experienced Ganeid in itself comes to an end with Cain and Hevel. That encounter with Cain and Hevel and Adam and Chava, but those were the ones who lived in that pre-outside of Ganeiden state of mind. And they represent a certain way of grappling with the world descending away from the possibility of experiencing a sense of wholeness, because again, wholeness is never fully accessible. It's only by HaKadosh Baruch Hu that fullness, full wholeness exists. But nevertheless, there was a relative wholeness that Adam and Chava were capable of experiencing in terms of that Gan Eden experience. Now, outside of Gan Eden, our ability, like we said in the first year, is to taste Gan Eden, is to uncover the Nahar Hayoitzim Yeitzim Lahashkei Sasagan, to uncover the secret, irreducible stream of thought and desire and pleasure that is always emergent at the fount of the Neshama, which is irrigating the mind, which operates in a limited sense with the unlimited expression of Gan Eden, that place of faith, that place of comfort, that place of choice, that place where we can truly align ourselves with that which is most significant, calming, and authentic or inauthentically authentic, whichever way we're going to look at it within ourselves. That Yechida Shebenefesh, that place where the infinite expression of all things expresses itself through the finite expression of our own particular mindset, thoughts, experiences, as it expresses itself in real time. Now, we have access to that. We have access to that place of on Shabbos, through mitzvot, through Tamat Torah, through the orientation of the mind, through mindfulness, through his bainanis, through hashkata, through all of the different processes, through Maisa mitzvot, through engagement with other people, through engagement with work. We have access at the ever ready. It's always available to us to taste that hint of Gan Eden, but we're never going to experience Gan Eden itself in our experiences until Mashiach comes, because Gan Eden itself is off limits since Adam and Chava are pushed away. What we can reveal is more and more of the scent of Gan Eden, is the taste of Gan Eden, which will retroactively reveal that this too is also part of Gan Eden. We extend Gan Eden, but at this moment, all we have access to is hints of Gan Eden, of that a person encounters these moments of calmness in a way that I can't ever truly lay my finger on exactly what the moment of calmness is, because to lay my finger on it completely would to be to take me out of the moment itself by way of objectification, and analysis. So by definition, the moments of calmness that one truly feels, as we're going to see by Shal Shudas Mincha time, are those that are beyond description, those moments that are only a te'ima. They're expressed through a, a he'elem. Olamecha tira can also mean see your concealment in your days, uncover from within the concealment of your experience the tam ha'etz ketam ha'pri, the secret taste of the reward that is available to all of us. And the first person who encounters a world that is no longer able to retreat back into that place of original Gan Eden is Noah. 
Noah never experienced Gan Eden. Noah comes at the end of a Maisa Bereshis where things begin to really unfold in a way that Menucha seems far away. It's all rooted in this desire for more, this objectification. Cain wins because Hevel is killed off, it's concealed, and it becomes a world of productivity, it becomes a world of functioning, and it becomes a world of the punishment of the ground, and the ground not yielding what we expected, and miscalculations, and, and misapprehensions, and, and misinformation, all of the different distortions and, and fissures that exist in, in the fabric of every aspect of reality as a result of the chait of the Eitz Sadas and being kicked out of Gan Eden. In this place, there's no more absolute grasp of Menuchah. It's a world that has gone awry. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu looks at the world and he decides that he has the capacity to change his mind. To, he wants to be Moichah Esayakim. He wants to erase it. There needs to be an erasure. There needs to be a return back to the beginning. And so things reach critical mass. Things reach that point where Menucha was no longer accessible. And then comes along Noah. And the first instantiation of Noah at the end of Parshas Bereshis is Lemech Ben. That Lemech lived 182 years and he had a child. And that child, Vikra Shimon Noah, that child's name was called Noah. That this one is called Noah as a result of the comfort that he is going to bring, as a result of the calmness that he is going to bring from the burden and the sadness of our hands, which are dependent upon the cursed nature of earth. We find Noah. Noah is referred to as Ze Yenachamenu Meoitzav Yadenu. Noah in Bereshis is a confrontation with a world that has fallen into disarray. Now there is effort needed. There's effort needed in every aspect. And again, like we said, what's the effort that takes away from calmness? Effort that takes away from calmness is the notion that in order to be who I am, I need to become something else. Rather than feeling that I'm enough and being able to grow from that sense of enoughness, that irreducible sense of enoughness that each and every person has to have, and then to want to grow from there. That's the Kayach of Menucha in our lives, where the Shairesh and the Anaf, where the root and the branch are inherently connected, even as the branch extends itself far beyond the root, because the branch never feels severed from the root. The branch is aware that every step that it grows, it's drawing out the Kayach of the root, and therefore productivity and Production and effort is not rooted in a sense of lack or deficiency or privation and scarcity, which leads to jealousy and anger and temptation, all of the things that take me out of my own individual world of Olamecha Tir Bachecha, but rather productivity is emergent out of a sense of enoughness, the logic of the supplement, which adds it to the Tesefes Kishat, in addition, where it operates in a place of enoughness, of Sheish Daiba Elukusi Lechobriya Vibriya, there's enough. It's the secret of the Mezuzah that I mark my possessional space and my territory with the awareness that everything that I possibly need need is in this place and to divest myself of that productive mindset as I enter into the places of calmness, into the bias where a person is meant to find menucha. And so Noah is coming to Noah is coming to reduce the effort of this land. Noah is coming to reduce the, the effort that it takes for human being to, to force themselves to distance themselves from themselves. Noah sees a world of actual physical labor of effort that to be human became difficult. The body begins to keep score after a while, and the body keeping score is the burdensome nature of v'yat sich molispo, that the individual has to gird their shoulders, and eventually the shoulders are the first thing that grow tired, and the body grows tired. And what Noah comes along to represent is the hope that through technological advancement, through the reduction through the reduction of effort and the reduction of labor, we will be capable of reducing the pain of this world. We will be capable of reducing, reducing, minimizing, minimizing the necessity of effort, the necessity to extend beyond myself. He was the inventor of the plowshare. It was an element of reducing the duration between effort and goal, rectifying the sin of the eights, which took a person away from themselves, a softening of our frustration when disappointment wrecks havoc upon the, the 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 wasteland of the ground. Learning how to be more comfortable in nature, learning for a human being to be more okay with their body, more okay with the way that things function in a physical world. That's the avoid of Noach originally, and that's the avoid of the Nachash ultimately. Noach is the tikkun of the Nachash in this sense, because Noach is the Dag HaGadol, it's the Leviathan, and the goal of the Nachash was to take care of this labor. The goal of the Nachash, we said, was to have legs and to take all of the waste outwards, to go downwards and get rid of the Sur Meirah, and to go upwards to find 
find beautiful diamonds to do the Asay Tov as well. The Nachash is what was lost in the Chet of the Eitz Adas. The human being was never meant to be engaged in this Klala Sa'aretz. That was the Avoid of the Nachash. And ultimately the Nachash sins and Noach, the Tzadikim come to be Matak in the Nachash and all Tzadikim are Nitzitz of Mashiach, which is the Gematri of Nachash, which is why Moshe Rabbeinu is buried in the big Vav of the Kol HaHalech HaGachon, as the Vilna Gon points out, that the Das of Moshe is contained within this attempt to rectify existence from within itself, from within the Nachash itself, from within the Klala itself, which is to minimize the effort to technologically bring about change, to minimize the duration and the effort needed. The question of what is technology ultimately is a question of minimizing the duration that exists as a result of falling away from the comfort of being human in the world itself. That was the first effort of Noah. And we all engage in processes like those in our lives, whether it's the reduction of the process, whether it's reducing the steps that are necessary that take me out of myself, that's the avoid of Noah. But then there's a second avoid of Noah. And then there's a second avoid of Noah that happens in Parshas Noah. And this is where Noah realizes that I can't, I can't draw down that comfort by way of my hand. The world is too awry. The world has, has gone, it has deviated away, not accidentally, but as we understand from the secret of Shri Sakelim and the hiddenness of Moshe Rabbeinu B'Shagam Hubasar, that every destructive act is ultimately a, a constructive act in the seek of refining and refining and abstracting and abstracting till we get to the final picture of Avram of Yinu, which begins with Lech Lecha, but Noach is the Emtsai between Horatius Noach and Lech Lecha. Noach is this hidden process that gives us the ability to connect the experience of Gan Eden with the Avos HaKadoshim. And over here in the second expression of Noach, in, in the Tzadik Noach, Tamim Haya Bedorosav, Noach Ish Tzadik. In that place, it's Noach after he realizes that by the work of my hands, I can't bring that Nechama. That Nechama, which the Mephorshim point out, is not comfort from some original pain, but rather it's calmness, because the original pain is the loss of calmness, is the inability to be calm with myself, to feel okay with myself, not to stop doing, but to be calm within my doing, to allow the muscles to kind of shrink back into a passive position where they're not under attack at every moment, where the brain is not misfiring information of being chased by something at every moment, but rather a person can sit and be calm and a person can live that calmness in the no v'nad yeh ba'aretz. Noach in the expression of Noach in Parshas Noach is the attempt to find calmness after we realize the breakdown of technology. That the nachash is not going to be mahapich into Mashiach until HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes. That's the avoida of Mashiach ben Yosef. That's dealing with the external circumstances of this worldly experience and the attempt to refine them in order to develop menucha. But the avoida of Mashiach ben David, the avoida of Noach after he recognizes that I can't bring it about in my own hands, becomes the inner avoida of finding menucha in a world where menucha seems absolutely lost. And that's the bilbul of the malbul. In the bilbule hamachshava, in the bilbulim of the heart, in the lev lev, in the sense of being drawn in different places and not being unified within myself and not being connected within myself and not feeling okay within myself and feeling the need to produce in order to be okay, et cetera, et cetera. And all of the symptoms... Ultimately, it's within that world that Noach teaches us a secret second form of menucha, which is the ability to build the teva within the mabul itself. As the Ramchal points out, as we've spoken about, as the Ramchal points out in Adir Bamarom, explaining the, the, the re redemptive and therapeutic value of learning Zohar, he explains that the secret of the teva is not that it's a reduction of the chaos on the outside, but rather it's a pocket of air within the chaos of the outside where one can feel as if it is safe. In that place of menucha, in tevas noach, in that place of the teva, each and every one of us have the ability to find our own teva of calmness. And what is the teva of calmness? As the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh explains, boy el ha teva, enter into the word, find the words, find the words of tefillah, the words of Torah, the words of Yehudim, the words of comfort, the words of conversation that allow want to calm themselves, the sha, sha to the self that the tzaddikim express when there's the movement inwards, when the anaf seems to extend beyond the shoresh, to quiet the self and to allow the self to abide within itself, to believe that we are enough, that each and every person is enough, that the lave is male, and that's why it feels like a bilbul, not because I'm not enough or I'm scattered, but because I contain multitudes and each and every one of us contains all of these experiences within ourselves. And this noach, this teva of noach has the ability of giving us access to the the, the microdose, the quintessence of the menucha that stands at the ready to be revealed in the future, the secret of Shabbos, the secret of boy matza manoyach, that yona matza boy manoyach, noach hatzadik, the nukuda of noach is to live with a spirit awareness 
to live with that splitness of the heart. There were some that said Noah was good. There were some that said Noah was bad. Either way we look at it, Noah's value was contextualized. And it was a choice for Noah to choose to see himself in one lens or the other. This is the framework in which we experience ourselves. We will not encounter a place of any external affirmation strong enough to give value and inherent value to the core of the self, to allow it to truly be calm and comfortable with the recognition that it is makusher to the manucha l'chayu alamim of HaKadosh Baruch Hu at each and every moment, and it can be a makam of manucha in the heart, where I realize that I don't have to do in order to be. I don't have to become in order to be, but rather I can be enough. The only way to access that point is to build the teva, is to find the secret of noach, to make the choice of, I can either see myself l'ganai, or I can either see myself as Tov, and each person has to find and affirm that calmness at the heart of the effort, that calmness, that ability of the Yat Sheikh Molispel to be okay. I have to put effort in anyway, but I can be okay in the process itself. I can find comfort. And that's the secret of Shabbos. The ability to taste Shabbos is the ability to, like we said last week, to realize that if I don't know where I am, ultimately I can choose to make Shabbos at the beginning or the end. And even though it's just a Havamina, every Havamina is also a Maskana, which means to say that Shabbos is a state of mind, that choosing Shabbos. And ultimately, it comes down to the very fact that when it comes to the highest point of our experiences, when it comes to what we want most, when it comes to the truest point and expression of the desire at the heart of a Yid on Mincha time, on Shabbos, where we encounter the Moshe of our mind, the David of our mind, the Yosef of our mind, where the Ravid the Ravan is uncovered, where the will of the will is uncovered, the most desired thing which is hidden underneath all other foreign desires, what we ask for is Menucha. What we daven for from HaKadosh Baruch Hu is menucha, the ability to let ourselves be okay for a moment so that the process becomes easier and that we can carry the weight necessary to get to the end of the process, to alleviate the added burden that we place upon ourselves by viewing ourselves through lenses of production value and by viewing ourselves in lenses of scarcity and desiring and eyes of kinah, taiva, and kava that take me out of my world. The secret of menucha, the ability to say, Rabbi Shalom, let me be okay, let me stop running from some imagined thing. Let me stop running from something that even appears to be real. Let me be present with myself. Let me be aware that I am enough and everything is enough and to grow from there and to not be terrified that by allowing myself to feel okay about myself and to not depend upon my production value, not to be concerned that that will lead me to disarray and that will lead me to complete dysfunction, but to trust the koyach of the neshama enough to believe in the tekifas of the neshama that has the ability to trust that if I allow myself to be okay and I connect to the capital O, okay, the menucha of HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kavyachol, the menucha of Chayo Elamim, at that place a yid has the ability to understand the secret of Vayar Menucha Kitov, Hashem, I give it over to you. You. And if we give it over to Hashem, Hashem gives us back a taste, but kifle kaflayim a doubled measure of that manucha, the man, the secret of the emuna in the mind to choose to live in that fount of the shayrish and the anaf to realize that every expression of everything that possibly can be in my mind is ultimately rooted and singularly connected to the achta saboyra, to the aluf shal olam, to that secret of the manucha l'chayu elamim, to that non-moving place prior to the tzimtzum, to that tahiru wila, to that silent place of the yechidah shebenefesh, that shal shudas, where we connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we say very simply what each of us and every one of us wants at the heart of our desire, that Teferis Gedud of Ateris Yeshua, Yom Menucha Bekedusha, a day of calmness and holiness, La'amcha Nasata, you've given it over to us, Avram Yagel Yitzhak Yeranein Yaakov Ubanov Yenuchubo, they'll rest in it, they'll find comfort, Menuchas Ava Venedava, a calmness that emerges from a place of love, a connectivity to that which I don't even know what I'm trying to connect to, but a love, a drive to connect to the infinite, like a lover yearning to encounter that which you can never grasp, as Shair Hashirim expresses over and over, Ahava, which is the decision to choose to live with a sense of love, in spite of the fact that love in a spiritual sense is not always going to be satisfied, but the secret of Mayim Rabim Lo Yachlu Lechaboisa Sa'ava, there's a Menucha of Ahava, Kadosh Baruch Hu, everything is Ba'ahava, Ba'ahava, a kol P'shayim Tech on all of the senses of not being enough and the transgressions, Ava will cover it because Ava will give me the ability to persist in spite of the fact that I don't feel enough. A calmness that allows me to persist. Vinadava, a calmness that allows me to see others with a, an eye of enoughness, not with an eye of scarcity, but an toiva, to see with Nidava, to want to give, to ask, what can I do to help? Not to be afraid that if he has, I lose, but rather to see that he and I can both have, that ultimately the man is equally measured to each and every individual. And there's enough of a Kaddish Baruch Hu to each and every person, meaning to say that there's a moment and a taste of Gan Eden within each and every person. Menuchas emes ve'emuna, a menucha that is built upon emes and my 
rational mind and a manucha that's built upon manucha when my rational mind fails me and I come to realize that my rational mind is built upon the secret of Amuna anyway and I decide which values and thoughts are going to be valuable to me ultimately and in that place of holding my manucha because I know my manucha is true and even when I don't think my manucha is true to act as if I'm the manucha a manucha of emes and a manucha of amuna a manucha of shalom and a manucha of shalva a manucha of peace peace within the self all battles emerge from the self peace between each and every house peace between the parts of ourselves a shalom and a sheket and a shalva a calmness of spirit a trickling down of that river that flows from Gan Eden a sha sha to all of the noise, a sha sha to all of the need to perform, to do betach, a muna in oneself, a muna in a kaddish baruchu, trust in oneself, belief in oneself, belief in a kaddish baruchu, manucha shleima sha'atar itzeba. A full sense of manucha. We know we can't access this, but Hashem, you want it, so we'll pretend that we have it. Manucha shleima sha'atarotzeba. Why? Because your ratzon is orienting that manucha. Ya kiru vanecha v'yedu. Your children should come to recognize and to know. Ki mischa v'manucha sam ya manucha sam ya kishu atchemecha. The biggest joke of it all. The biggest joke of it all. The biggest joke of all things in avoid the shlika elyon that Mashiach Tzidkeni will come to reveal is that we come to realize that the manucha that we are so engaged in the effort to encounter is ultimately from you, Rabbi Nishalaylam. There's no amount of effort that I could put in in this world that will bring me a taste of manucha that I need because to be in this world, as Rav Sadduk says, is to be in the opposite stage of manucha. Is to be about tenuah, as the Maharal says. Is to feel that the shirish and the anaf are perpetually alienated from one another. That the source and the root and the expression are fundamentally severed from one another, God forbid. As if the lahat ha'chavah is the rotating sword of of ruminating anxiety and questions of faith and the decision to believe again and again and again they're not real all of those machitos, all of those separations and the partitions that separate my notion of effort and the result that will come afterwards are not real they're it only appears as if I'm Mugurash but in truth I still have that place of Gan Eden within me and I come to realize that all of my efforts I'm just a shliach of you Rabban I'm just a shliach and the shliach is mavutl to the shliach and that when I'm a shliach of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, Rabbi Nassim says, the Baal Tanya says, as all of the tzaddikim say, ultimately I'm no longer being yonik on my own koach, I'm, I'm not being yonik on my own koach, then I have the ability of drawing down from that place beyond the klala, which is the secret of Tevas Noach, and Hashem, you love us so much that you're going to take that manucha that you give me, the one that it appears I'm working for, that you give me ultimately, that I come to recognize that no matter what I do, no matter how much of an evid I feel I am, ultimately I'm getting everything because I'm a ben, and ultimately, all of the effort is only a hisairis to a mat naschinim of manucha. Not only that, but Hashem, you take that manucha and you put it in your crown. You, Kav Yochel, take that manucha and you illuminate the worlds with that manucha as if it was mine. As if it was mine, like a child whose father or parent plays with them, pretending that the child has accomplished something. In truth, the parent has been the one who's been pushing it all along, as the Magad HaKadosh brings down. That the secret of manucha is that it comes from Hashem, and when we allow ourselves to experience that gift of manucha that comes from Hashem, it's only then, it's only then that HaKadosh Baruch is going to take that manucha and say, you've done exactly what I've wanted you to do. I wanted you to be manucha. I want you to calm down. I want you to find calmness so that you're prepared to face what this world is, Bezra Sashem. And that's the secret of Tevas Noach. And Avada, there'll be future shirim on the very real danger of once a person experiences this Tevas Noach and a person experiences this taste of manucha. So it's no wonder that a person finds themselves with a tendency towards if I've tasted that once and I can't find it again, then we have Noach planting a vineyard and encountering intoxication because the pleasure of calmness alone without the secret of effort is one that can lead to the attempt to recreate it in artificial ways in the notion and the mindset of making some objective tool necessary for my inner state which is something that we're going to discuss and we have discussed in the inner world of addiction shirim which ultimately begin where this year is leaving off as well as the shirim that we're going to be discussing in the future be'ezra sashem